All right, we're talking today about simplifying, verifying will be later in the week, but just simplifying trigonometric expressions. <clears throat> all right, here's an equation. You guys agree x plus 2 equals 5. You all can solve for x, mm -hmm. right? The second equation has variables on both sides. But what do you know that that equal sign means? The equal sign means that the left-hand side is the same as the right-hand side, correct? So we're going to take these things called trig identities, and we're going to simplify big, long trig equations into little tiny trig equations. You'll see what I mean in a minute. You're going to have a cheat sheet, I'm going to call it. So it's, you're going to have all the identities and what they change into and all that good stuff. I will give that to you. You should put it next to every single problem that we do. This right here, this identity, you guys will become very familiar with. I know you're like, what are you talking about? Soon, you, when you guys see sine squared plus cosine squared, you're going to go, oh, that equals 1. What I want you to keep in mind, write this down, the two most basic trig functions. are sine and cosine. All right, two most basic trig functions are sine and cosine. So when we are simplifying, when we're breaking down, you want to change everything in terms of sine and cosine. Again, this will make sense in a minute. And we're going to go through some things. I'm going to go through some steps that you should do in your head to kind of make this process a little easier. But what we're going to get to is, you guys remember those two column proofs in geometry like this? We're going to get to doing two column proofs with trig identities. It's a trigonometric proof. It's super. <laughs> this is the hardest stuff we do all year, guys. All right. These are your identities. I'm going to give you, actually, let me get, I, I have it on a, another sheet. <clears throat> We're going to be talking about two types of identities. Co-functions and stuff that are on the next slide we're not going to do. But your reciprocal identities and your Pythagorean identities are going to be your best friend. Reciprocal identities. You guys already know this. Cosecant is the same as 1 over sine. Same as sine is the same as what? 1 over cosecant, right? Okay. So secant is the same as 1 over cosine. So cosine is the same as 1 over secant. Cotangent is the same as 1 over tangent. Tangent is the same as 1 over cotangent. You guys are familiar with this. We've already done trig ratios like that. These two in the middle right here are probably the ones that are going to be used the most. Tangent is the same as sine over cosine, and cotangent is the same as cosine over sine. When I told you just a slide ago, what are the two most basic trig functions that we talk about? Sine, sine and cosine. Remember that. <clears throat> now, you have special identities that are called Pythagorean identities. There's three of them. Why do you think they're called Pythagorean identities? Look at them. They all have a number attached, okay? They have a plus sign, and they're also what? Squared, Squared all right? So what I'm going to say to you guys is I'm going to say, okay, look. Look at your original problem. Is there anything that is squared that's attached to a plus or a minus one? If there is, that's where you look first is your identities. What you want to do is try to simplify. You want to try and get rid of the plus and minus. It makes your life a lot easier. Now, the biggest thing, I'm going to say this a million times, I want you to think algebraically. Think algebraically. You guys are really good with that. If you have two fractions and you're adding them together, you need to get a common denominator, right? If you have the same thing divided by itself, if you have 10 divided by 10, the answer is 1. We're going to think algebraically. You can factor, you can combine like terms, all that kind of stuff you can do with trig functions, and we're going to. It's just going to look different, but if you think algebraically through this, it's not horrible. All right, what I want you guys to do, first of all, I would change cosine. I'm going to say cosine x plus tangent x sine of x. Every single time you have one of these problems, if you want to change whatever letter or Greek letter they give you, you want to change it into an x or an alpha or whatever, that's fine. <clears throat> but where it says to simplify, guys, what does the word simplify mean? To make what? 
to make smaller, to make simpler, right? This, there's a lot going on here. We have some multiplication. You guys agree there's multiplication here. We're adding stuff together. So let's try to simplify this. First thing I ask myself, you should have your identities next to you. Do you have, do you have <clears throat> anything that's squared that's attached to a plus or a minus one? No. Okay. So then when all else fails, we don't have that to look at the identities. Just let's go through and change everything to sines and cosines. I'm going to leave cosine just like it is because that's our most basic trig function. I'm going to put it over one. Plus. What can I change tangent to? Look at your identity cheat sheet. What can I change tangent to? Sine over cosine. Perfect. So sine over cosine. Whoops. And then this is times sine, right? Over one. Agree? All right. So I see two things. I see multiplication and I see addition. So what would we do first? Multiplication. Okay. So we're going to keep cosine here. So sine x over 1. And I'm going to multiply. What's sine times sine? Sine squared. Sine squared. Okay. So sine squared over cosine times 1 is just cosine. Now, think algebraically. Can I just cross those two out? Yeah. Why can't I? You're right. Why can't I? Because it's plus. If the, you were multiplying those two, absolutely, just cross them out. But you can't because you're adding. So if I, you have to do what, Camila? Common denominator. Guys, if I had 1 half plus 7 over 5, every single one of you in here would tell me, oh, the common denominator is what? 10. You just multiply them together, right? So let's think algebraically. I have cosine x plus sine squared x. What is my common denominator between those these two? Cosine of x. Okay, good. So I look at my first fraction. What do I have to multiply the denominator by so it says cosine x? Cosine. So what you do to the bottom, you do where? To the, to the top. Okay, guys, what's cosine times cosine? Cosine squared. The second one has the cosine, so just leave it, plus sine squared. Now you're looking at it, you're like, okay, what are you doing? Well, think about it. Do you now have something that's squared with a plus sign in it? Yes. yes. Look at your Pythagorean identities. What is cosine squared plus sine squared equal? One. It equals one. I can cross off this whole numerator and make it a what? One. A 1. So I'm left with 1 over cosine x. Now, that's pretty simple, but I can write it even simpler. Secant. What is 1 over cosine the same as? Secant. So your answer here would be secant x. So you started here, and you ended there. Those two things are exactly the same. They are equivalent. When you simplify, you just want to make things smaller. Always, always, always want to make things smaller. All right, starting probably Wednesday, <coughs> tomorrow into Wednesday, <coughs> I'm going to give you a statement like this, and it says equals, it would be like that. And you would have to prove it. This would be all of your work in here, proving it. We already know it's a true statement. You have to prove it. You have to show me mathematically why. All right, so let's go ahead and pull up the PDF. Pull up the PDF on your homework. If for some reason you guys can't open it, go through Safari. Some people were having some internet issues last period. But go in through Safari if it's locked. <clears throat> oh, we're going to go through here, and we're going to simplify. We're going to do right now, go ahead and cross off 25 and 26. We're going to do 21, 22, 23, 24. That's the first ones we're going to do. Uh-huh. Did you say it's done for one practice? Yes. For me, it's locked. Yeah. Um, all right, so let's look at 21. You guys should have, you have your identity should be right by you. So 21 secant x times cosine x. And 22 is tangent x times cosecant x. All right, so your identities are right next to you. You guys will have these on your test when you go to do these or a quiz if you have it. First thing you look at is you say, okay, are there any trig functions that are squared that have a plus or a minus one attached to it? Yes or no? No. no. If your answer is no, then your problem is pretty simple because now you just go, okay, great. Let me use my reciprocal identities and we want to change everything in terms of what? 
One of the two most basic trig functions. Sine, sine, sine and cosine, all right? So tell me, what's another way I can write secant? One over cosine. One over what? One over cosine. Okay, great. Cosine's already super basic. We just leave it alone. So here I have cosine over one. Now, since we are multiplying, what can you do if there's something in the numerator that's the same as something in the denominator? You can cross it off. So what's your answer? One. That's it. When you don't have any plus or minus signs, your problem's a lot easier. <clears throat> a lot easier. Let's look, at num let's look at 22. Guys, I'm doing your homework with you right now. So for those of you who are not paying attention, come on. All right, look. Do you have a trig function that is being squared that's attached to a plus or minus 1? Mm -hmm. No. So let's just go everything in terms of sine and cosine. So what can you change tangent to? Sine over cosine, good. What can we change cosecant to? One over sine, okay. Now, why did that help us out? Yep, sine on top, crosses off with sine on the bottom. So I'm left with one over cosine. Yes, ma'am. Because sine and cosine are the two most basic trig functions. So if you're going to simplify, you want... You want things to be as simple as possible. So we go to sine and cosine because those are the simplest trig functions that we have. And then when you go to combine them, they'll cancel out. What's another way that I could rewrite 1 over cosine? Secant. So when you simplify, guys, your answer should be small. It should be tiny. Generally not a fraction. If we left it 1 over <coughs> cosine, maybe. You get points off. Good question. If you left it as 1 over cosine, you'd get points off because it's not fully simplified. It's like leaving 2 fourths as your answer. All right, so when we don't have anything plus or minus attached to it, it's a lot easier. If you look at questions like 23 and 24, okay, 23 and 24 are a little bit different. I'm going to show you all kinds of different problems today. 23 says cotangent squared x minus, is it cosecant squared? Okay, cotangent squared minus cosecant squared. Now let's think algebraically. Can I subtract those two? God bless you. No, how come I can't? If it said x squared minus y squared, could I subtract them? No, because no, they're, not, they're not the same. So now we have to think, okay, well somehow we got to get them to be the same. So look at your identities, look at your problem. Do you have a trig function that's squared that has a minus or a plus sign attached to it? Yes. So now let's look at our identity sheet. Look at your Pythagoreans. Is there anything on the identity sheet that has cotangent squared and cosecant squared on it? What is it? Read it to me. One plus cotangent squared equals what? Cosecant squared. Now we're trying to get our trig functions to be the same so we can combine them. Could I take this and stick it in there? Yeah. How come? Because it's equal. It's the same thing. It's equal to. So I could rewrite this as cotangent squared minus 1 plus cotangent squared. Everybody agree with me? All right. <coughs> well... Yep, we're going to, well, we have to distribute, right? We have to distribute the minus sign. So cotangent squared x minus 1 minus cotangent squared x. What's cotangent squared x minus cotangent squared x? Zero. Zero. What's x squared minus x squared? Zero. What's 10 minus 10? Zero. Just because it's a trig function doesn't, this is a positive one, this is a negative one. These just cancel out. So what's your answer here? Negative 1. That's it. Okay, so we looked at the beginning. We said, okay, I have two different trig functions, so I can't just subtract them because they're not the same. They don't have like terms. <clears throat> so I looked at my Pythagorean identities, and I said, is there something that has cotangent squared and cosecant squared in it? And it, there is. It's this trig function, this identity right here. So I replaced cosecant squared with 1 plus cotangent squared because they, they, they're equivalent. They equaled the same thing. And then I just distributed my, neg my minus sign, so a positive cotangent squared and a negative cotangent squared just cancel out. You 
No. They like each other? One plus cotangent squared is the same as cosecant squared. That's one of the identities on the identity sheet. Okay. Let's look at 24. You guys will start, you'll start to see patterns, I promise. Today's going to be a little, little yucky, but you'll start to see. It gets a little better. I have 1 minus cosine squared, 1 minus cosine squared, times what? Cosecant. All right, we want to get rid of, before you start to break everything down, you want to get rid of the plus minus 1 stuff. So I see 1 minus cosine squared. That means i got to look at my identities. Is there an identity that has a 1 and a cosine squared in it? Yes, what is it? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, all right? What we're gonna do, like heaven, we're gonna do what we just did. I wanna somehow manipulate that identity so it says one minus cosine squared. How could I get that cosine squared to go to the other side? How can I get this cosine squared to move to the other side? Algebraically, how would I do it? I would subtract it, right? So if I subtract this from both sides, we want to get rid of this. So by looking at that, I see, oh, wait a second. If I move the cosine to the other side, is this not the exact same thing as this? So I can replace 1 minus cosine squared with what? What is 1 minus cosine squared x equal? Sine squared. So I got rid of, you're trying to get rid of the 1 and the minus sign because once you get the minus and the pluses out of the way, then you can just start to cancel stuff. So 1 minus cosine squared is the same as sine squared. How can I rewrite cosecant? 1 over sine, okay? Now that I have my plus and minus out of the way, do you, can I cancel anything? Yes. Yeah. I have one sign on the bottom. I can get rid of one sign on the top. So what am I left with? Just sine of x. So you started off with this and you ended up with that. Those two things are the exact same thing. They, 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 they mean the same thing. They just look different. Now, the more we do this, guys, the easier it gets. But the more I do for you doesn't make it any easier for you. You guys have to practice this. Yes, ma'am. One minus cosine? Is that what that is? Yeah, yeah. No, no, you're fine. You're fine. I replace one minus cosine with sine squared. Because sine squared equals... Where does it say that? Right here is your identity that's on your sheet. Right? Uh -huh. So I was like, okay, I see I'm trying to get this to go away. So I looked at this identity... And I said, how can I rewrite it so it says 1 minus cosine? So I subtracted cosine from both sides. The, these two things are the exact same thing. Just algebraically, you can move stuff from one side of the equation to the other. So that's all we did was just move the cos. It's, one, it's positive on the left-hand side. I moved it to the right-hand side. It became negative. And then you got rid of the two-termed expression and changed it into one term. You went from 1 minus cosine squared to sine squared it equals the same thing. I know this is confusing. Give, give me a couple days. Give me a couple days. <clears throat> sine, sine X. All right, let's look, at, let's look at some more. Let's look right here. All right, 34. Again, guys, that's beta. You can change it to whatever you want. 34, this is an easy one. Why is 34 an easy one? Multiplying. Because it's multiplying. I don't have anything being added or subtracted, so then we're like, oh, easy. Just go to sines and cosines. Cosine's going to stay. It's just cosine theta. What am I going to What am I gonna change tangent into? Okay, everybody look at your trig. Look at your identities. What can I change tangent to in terms of sine and cosine? Come on. Sine over cosine? Okay. Now, what do you notice happens? Since we're multiplying, what can I do with my cosines? They cancel out, and you're left with just what? Sine theta, sine x, sine theta, whatever you want to use. When you don't have anything being added or subtracted, this is really 
simple. You just use your identities. Now, this is really hard if you don't know, if you don't have the identity sheet with you. I will give it to you. All right, let's look at 36. All right, 36 is really similar to the one we just did above. You guys will start to see patterns, I promise. I have secant squared, one minus sine squared. Where should your eyes go first? The secant squared or the one minus? One minus. One minus. You got to get rid of that. You don't want that. So look at your identity sheet. What trig function or trig identity has a one and a sine squared in it? Sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. You're going to use that one a lot. Now, heaven, Bella, right? We just did this same kind of problem. I want to rearrange this formula so one and sine squared are on the same side. How would I get that sine squared to move over there? Yeah, it's positive right now, so I'm going to subtract it. I'm going to subtract it from both sides. So when I do that, I have cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared. So what can I replace this with now? What can I replace that 1 minus sine with? Yes, ma'am. Perfect. And the reason why that's so, much, that's so important is because now I have secant squared and then I have cosine squared. I don't have that minus any, anymore. Which means you can just go right to sines and cosines, and since we're multiplying, you can just cross off. So what's the secant the same as? One over cosine squared, okay. And then I have cosine squared over one. So what happens? This cancels out, and it equals just one. Anytime you have a minus sign and a trig function squared, or a plus sign, <clears throat> when they're connected with a plus or minus sign, you can go to those Pythagorean identities. Yes, sir. How do you get cosine over one? For it's cosine squared. I just put it over one. No, you're fine. I just put it over one. All right, let's scoot over here. Let's do. Sure, 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 sure. All right, let's scoot on over here to thirty-eight and forty. Hopefully, right now, thirty-eight and forty are going to be easy for us. Hopefully, 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 you guys are like, oh, okay, I kind of see it. All right, so 38 is secant over cosecant. Is there anything being added or subtracted and attached to a 1? No. no. So that means we go everything in terms of what? Sine and cosine. So I'm going to rewrite secant as what? 1 over cosine. One over cosine. Okay. I'm going to rewrite cosecant as what? One over sine, all right? Again, we're trying to simplify. We're making things smaller. Think algebraically, guys. You have a fraction divided by a fraction. What do we do when we, we have two? We, what do we do? Keep change flips. So I'm going to keep 1 over cosine, 38. I'm going to keep 1 over cosine. I'm going to change division to multiplication, and I'm going to flip. 1 over sine becomes sine over 1. All right, we can't cross anything out, but can we multiply? Absolutely. 1 times sine is sine. Cosine times 1 is cosine. How can I simplify that a little bit more? What's sine over cosine the same as? Tangent. Tangent. Perfect. Good job. All right, 40 is about the same. Do I have anything squared? Yeah, but is it attached to a plus or a minus anything? No. So that's fine. Just go to sines and cosines. I'm going to rewrite tangent as sine squared over cosine squared. Right? And then I have divided by, what's another way I can write secant? 1 over cosine squared. Good. I have a fraction divided by a fraction, so what do we do? Keep change flips. So sine squared over cosine squared times, when I flip this, this becomes cosine squared over 1. What happens? 
cosines cancel. What are you left with? Sine squared. You guys will start to see patterns, I promise. All right, let's look at the last two. I helped you out here a little bit, and I said to factor. Okay, so let's look at 46. Because we're going to get, in a few sections, we're going to get to where we have to solve these. So it says secant squared x tangent squared x plus secant squared x, all right? I see stuff squared <coughs> that's attached to other stuff, so I can't just go already to sines and cosines. But if you were to think algebraically, look at each term. This is your first term, and this is your second term. Do you see that they have anything in common? Yeah. Yes or no? Yeah, if you guys had this, x squared, y plus x squared, what would you tell me you could take out of both of them? x squared, right? Same thing here. What can you take out of both of these? Secant squared x. So when I do that, I'm going to divide out a secant squared here, and I'm going to divide out a secant squared here. So you're left with tangent squared x plus what? What's anything divided by itself? One. <clears throat> All right. Now, why was that helpful? Do you still have something squared that's attached to a plus or a minus one? Yes. Look at your trig identities. What is tangent squared plus one the same as? Mm -hmm. Look at your trig identities. What is tangent squared plus one the same as? Mm -hmm. Secant squared. Now, it's much better because we're condensing. We're making it smaller. Now, guys, if you have something squared times something squared, that gives you something to the fourth power. So it's secant to the fourth x. Now, somebody last year is like, can I write that as 1 over cosine? You could, but is that the most simplified form if you change it from one term and then change it to a fraction? No. But always think algebraically. <clears throat> if you think algebraically, you guys can solve these a lot simpler. The thing that's confusing is the words. But the process, solving and stuff like that, you'll see that everything is the same. It's just the words kind of throw it off. But I'm going to give you all of the identity, so it's not that bad. All right, last one, and then part one of your homework is done. You have cosecant squared minus, whoops, minus 1 over cosecant x minus 1. All right, now, no, Bobby's there. <clears throat> if you guys look at this problem... Can I just cross this off and this off? No. Why not? Because, uh, not exactly the same. Good. How come I can't just cross the ones off? Because it's, attached. because it's attached, right? If I gave you guys this, x plus 3 over x minus 6, would you tell me that you could just cross those off and then that becomes negative 1 half? No, you can't do that. So now you're like, okay, well, cosecant squared x minus 1. If I look at my trig identities, is that going to help me at all? This is where you guys are going to have to try stuff. All right, what is cosecant squared x minus 1 equal? Cotangent squared x. All right, is that going to help us at all? That doesn't really help us because that, that doesn't do anything for the bottom. So let's think about this for a second. If I had this, what does that factor it out to be? Uh, make it a 4. X plus 2, X minus 3, right? What about if it was a 9? X minus 3, X plus 3. Is this the difference of perfect squares? What times what is cosecant squared? Cosecant? Yep. Plus 1 minus 1. So now what can you do with the top and the bottom? You can cancel, so you'd be left with just this. Now, somebody, like, you'd think, why in the world did you do that? You're going to have to look for clues, guys. When you start off with a problem like number 48, right, the first place your eyes should have gone were to your Pythagorean identities because there's something squared with a 1 attached to it. But there is a clue in that problem. The clue is the bottom and the top look really similar, right? If you have something that looks really similar, the chances of it being probably the difference of perfect squares or something like that is very high. 
you're all oh, you the more that you do this i promise you you'll start to see oh it's the same thing it's the same thing it's the same thing you'll start to see patterns develop you guys will get to the point where you'll start you won't even have to look at your trig identities that much anymore what sign over cosine the same as tangent you're going to use that one a lot what's secant the same as one over secant one over cosine cosecant same as one over sine you guys are going to start to see you're going to start to develop patterns you're going to be like okay this isn't as awful it's not, no, nobody in here is going to be like oh this is so much fun i love it but hopefully it won't be as awful as it seems right now i promise just give me a few days what I have circled. Oh. And then that's our homework. Your homework is done for part one. Tomorrow, we're going to go through part two. I may get through all of it. I may not. You might have to do a little bit of it at home. But the most important thing, guys, is practicing this. If you just turn in someone else's homework for the next two days, okay, fine. You probably get by with it. But to do this on a test or a quiz, it's not going to help you if you haven't practiced it. Can you go back to 30 days? Sure. Yeah, there it is. Sir.